Hi Archers! Today I'll be showing and guiding you through a new updated tier list for patch 1.3.6. We've seen a lot of newly added abilities and also changed abilities. This video will have a tier list for all weapons. A disclaimer, this is based on my playstyle, research, experience and opinion. You may not agree with me and that's perfectly fine. Adjust each tier list to your own playstyle. For example, some of you may value attack speed over raw attack. Some of you may value crit over raw attack. Always adjust to your preference. All of these tier lists are just general. There is always a different tier list depending on the hero you're using, the chapter you're on, and the situation you're in. Obviously, I cannot account for each scenario, so this is just a general tier list. Again, adjust where needed. Defense and damage are the two major aspects. If you need more defense, go for a defense ability. If you need more damage, go for a damage ability. I'm sorry if my throat sounds a little croaky right now, I am a little bit sick. My name is Teeds. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe and click the bell for more archery videos. There will be timestamps in the description box below for each weapon as any changes I might make. I recommend watching the general tier list first before switching to a weapon specific tier list. Side note, for farming runs or low chapter runs where you're a lot stronger, it really doesn't matter what you pick up. These are tier lists for pushing chapters you're stuck on. Here is the general tier list. Even though Rage is very strong, I did not place it before multi-shot or front arrow as Rage is still dependent on losing health. Ricochet is placed in extremely strong because I am someone who values single target damage over dealing less damage over multiple targets. This is another playstyle preference and Ricochet is actually stronger in some chapters over front arrow. So crit plus is in strong, attack plus is in above average, and attack speed plus and HP plus is in average. This is what I found to be best because I don't find them equal, but then again, it's also up to your playstyle preference. If you value speed over attack, then I would just swap the ability around and so on. Plus abilities are dependent on how well you can take no damage in the chapter you're on. I would not recommend the plus abilities for wave and boss based chapters. If you're not someone who wants to risk it or stack an ability, then just ignore them as a whole. For the aura abilities, I've placed crit aura in extremely strong and speed aura in strong. Again, depends on what you value, but if I had to choose between the two abilities, I would choose crit aura. Crit aura stacks extremely well with the other crit abilities and because I don't value speed that much, I'm not as likely to pick up other speed items to stack it with speed aura. Ignore the aura abilities if you do not like to rely on timing because sometimes the timing could be off and you may not make use of it if you're busy dodging during the times it's active. I've placed the pet abilities in above average except for spirit, front arrow, multi shot and diagonal arrows. The pet abilities are placed in above average for the unique hero buffs. Not because of the pet buff itself. If you're not sure what they do, I'll link a video in the description box below explaining their stats. Bloodthirst is in strong, despite it probably clashing with other players' own tier lists. I think a lot of players don't like it, and then there's a lot of players that do like it. Bloodthirst I actually find extremely helpful in pushing through levels that hit hard. I literally beat most of my chapters when I have this ability because usually the 30s or the 40s on certain chapters are very difficult for me. Because I'm usually low health during the 30s or 40s, Bloodthirst helps me get that health back. The Meteor and Star abilities are no longer in Never Pick Up because Archer has changed them. They now hit the enemy you're targeting and no longer just get thrown around randomly. I personally prefer the Star abilities over the Meteor abilities. Diagonal arrows, side arrows and rear arrows along with piercing and bouncy wall are placed in situational because as single abilities they're not the best but comboed together they can be very strong. Giant is now situational. While it is a strong ability, I personally think it's a little overhyped. It grants only 10% more damage of a major attack boost in comparison, but you have a huge downside of having a bigger hitbox. What makes this ability really crazy strong, I guess, for some people, is that it does grant you 40% attack on the get-go. However, there is a huge downside, so it does just come back down if you're good at dodging or not. If you're good at dodging, then the hitbox may not be an issue for you. Now onto the weapon tier list. Remember that our time stands in the comments down below. You can just pick what you need. So for death scythe uses, epic passive chance to headshot enemies below 30% health. I moved piercing from situational to avoid. This is a situational avoid though. If you have bouncy wall, I would suggest avoiding piercing with that combo. The ability by itself is not bad, but in the combo, I do not like it with the scythe. 
This again is a personal preference. It may work for you, but not for me. I tend to get hit a lot by enemy projectiles as the scythe has the strongest knockback in the game. Piercing and bouncy wall allow the scythe to reposition the enemy because of that strong knockback where the attack will hit you or you'll be hit with collision damage. It's a risky pickup, but again, personal preference. Because the scythe is so strong and it hits so hard and it also has that epic passive, I find that ricochet is the only crowd ability that I get and I then just focus on single target damage. Tornado uses. Epic passive increased bonus damage on return. There are quite a few changes here. Tornado benefits from the bonus damage on return, which is why you want to avoid most of these abilities. Moved bouncy wall down to avoid. Ricochet down to avoid. Piercing down to never pick up. Diagonal arrows moved up to strong. Rear and side arrows moved up to above average. Moved freeze up to above average. Because there is no knockback on the tornado, freeze may help in controlling some mobs. This also goes for the other freeze abilities if you feel that you need them. Sawblade and Bright Spear uses. Sawblade's epic passive increase attack speed for 3 seconds upon entering the room. Bright Spear's epic passive increase damage when attacking the same target type. I found these two weapons to not be too different in builds. Ricochet moved up to always pick up. Blaze and Lightning to above average. Bouncy Wall combo to above average. I would usually go either Ricochet or Bouncy Wall combo but usually not both. Then I moved attack speed plus up to above average, moved freeze up to above average for the bright spear because of the lack of knockback. This may help in controlling some mobs. With spear and blade, I sometimes would lean on more attack and then sometimes lean on more attack speed or a mixture of both. Blade has the fastest attack animation and spear has the fastest projectile speed. I find that these two weapons benefit a lot from aura abilities because of how fast they both are. You can manipulate the way you use the aura abilities for when it's just about to pop up, then enter the next level to use the aura right away. Sawblade's epic passive benefits from this a lot due to the increase in attack speed. Brave Bro uses. Epic passive increase crit damage. Crit major and crit aura up to extremely strong. There is not much to say about the Brave Bro tier list. Honestly, I find the bow very flexible in terms of builds. It has high speed and decent knockback in terms of a damage route. I would try to stack damage and crit. Stalker Staff uses. Epic passive, increase crit rate the lower the health of your target. Moved diagonal arrows to always pick up. Moved front arrow down to strong. Moved rear and side arrows up to strong. Moved bouncy wall down to situational because I personally find the staff distracting and bouncy wall makes it a lot harder for me to concentrate on the enemy's attack. Personally, I would just stack as many arrows except for front arrow as I can on Stalker Staff. I prefer crit over attack boost on Stalker Staff, but again, personal preference. Front arrow lowers the damage of the other projectiles from the staff. I didn't put this in a void because sometimes you just don't get diagonal arrows. And if you don't have diagonal arrows, then it's better to get front arrow. It's very hard and confusing because you don't know if it'll pop up later. With diagonal arrows and multiple arrows, I find that the Stalker Staff is the strongest weapon in the game. Even so, I personally do not use the Stalker Staff because I find it distracting, but if you're okay with that, then that's perfectly fine. Moved Speed Aura to Extremely Strong. I found this weapon very strong with attack speed and crit aura as well because it follows the enemies. And that is all for today's video. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe and click the bell for more Archer videos. Any comments and likes would be super appreciated. And I just want to take this time to say that I will be making more content about a new game, which is called Animal Crossing. And as well for Smite uses, which I don't think you will see this message, but I will be leaning onto more Smite content as well. I do want to expand my content a lot, especially because Archer is a lot slower with updates now, so I need to make something in between. While I am still making adverse gameplay videos, it does take a lot of effort to make them, so they are going to be coming out slowly. I hope the content amount doesn't overwhelm you. I will always stick with Archer, it is my main content for my channel. But for now, I will be switching up my content more while we still get some more updates from Archer because they're a little bit slow, which is okay. I hope to see you again for the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting me. I have reached 40k subscribers recently and I'm just, I just didn't know I would be in this place. I love you guys so much. I will see you again. Bye!